Hey guys, welcome back to Mrs. G's Sewing Space. I'm glad you're able to join us today. So today I have something really special going on. We are going to make these simple kitty cat and puppy dog stuffies and I'm going to be able to tell you where you can send them to get a lot of love. So as I told you earlier, these are two simple, really cute little kitty cat and puppy dog stuffies that I had created. Um, what I usually make these for is to give to kids um, through the police department or the fire department. Depending on your local departments, depends on if they would accept them. I know the Red Cross accepts them as well. And what they do is, when they go and visit places that have little kids, because of the experiences that the police had to show up for, sometimes little kids are really scared and lonely and so they are able to provide these stuffies to the little kids to be able to give them a little bit of comfort. So I would like to show you how to make these so maybe if you get a group of people together and you can make the little stuffies and give them to your police department, your fire department, or the local Red Cross. I know the local Red Cross does the same thing and then they can pass them out to kids who really need them, who need a little something to love on and to comfort them. So, let's get started on making the stuffies, and they're super cute. For this project, you need a blank white fabric. This is muslin. This is bleached muslin, and this is what I use because muslin tends to be pretty strong. It seem, it, it's pretty long-wearing because it has no print on it. It hasn't been through too many chemical processes, which weakens the fabric. So, I usually go with unbleached muslin, but I didn't have any, so this is bleached muslin for my baby doll. Then I have my pattern, and I'm going to do my best to get this uploaded onto my blog as soon as I can. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I'm going to try to get this scanned and uploaded to my blog so that you guys can have the pattern as well. So I have my pattern, and I have a body, which you'll need to cut two pieces. I have an arm, which you'll need to cut four pieces for two arms. I have a leg, which you'll need to cut four pieces so that you can have two legs. And the same for the ears. I have a dog ear and I have a cat ear. Each of them will need to be cut four times so that you can have uh, two ears. And the ears have a curve to them so that they can match the body when it's time to put everything together. So when you cut them, you can fold your fabric over. For example, if you had your fabric, you fold it over so that you have two layers. And then you cut a piece like this and then you flip it and cut a piece like this. And the same for the dog ears. You would cut a piece with your pattern facing up and then with your pattern facing down. And then that way you have four pieces cut out that will fit together properly. And then this right here are my two bodies. So I'm gonna make a dog and a cat. And these are my two little bodies that we're gonna work on together. This over here is a whole bunch of extra scrap slash embroidery fabric, novelty fabric, felt, flannel, just four fat quarters, things that I could use to decorate or make clothes for my, my two animals. Take care of that towards the end. And then you need your normal, your sewing machine, your thread, your scissors, all your normal sewing stuff. But also, because you're stuffing, you will need polyester fiber fill. You can get this at any craft store. This is what you really want to need for stuffed animals or stuffies of any sort. I have already cut out my my bodies. So I have one front, one back for my bodies. I have arms, so that's one arm which is two pieces. I have another arm which is two pieces. This one is the puppy dog, so I have two pieces for an ear another two pieces for an ear and I have two legs which means there's four pieces right here cut out just for the legs right here so two pieces for a front and back and two pieces for a front and back on the leg so what we're gonna do we're gonna put our right sides together now if you cut them out we're gonna set aside our body because our body's gonna be dealt with toward the end and what we want to concentrate on is our ears, our arms, and our legs. Now all you have to do is pin it together. Each of these pattern pieces have a quarter inch seam allowance, 
meaning that when you put your fabric onto your sewing machine, all you have to do is line up the edge of your fabric against your presser foot, and that's a quarter inch right there. And you just ride the edge of the fabric underneath that presser foot without going over, and it'll give you a quarter inch all the way around. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew the arms and the legs a quarter inch all the way around. So I'm going to go sew up my arms and my legs, uh, and I will be right back. All right, now that we have our legs and our arms sewn, I'm setting the ears aside for the moment. Because these are uh, shaped in curves, we're going to have to clip the seams so that we'll be able to flip everything inside and the seam allowance will be able to sit properly. So I'm doing two dolls at a time. I'm going to do the cat and the dog at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and clip the curves and normally as a demonstration I would show you I would use a different color thread to be able to show you where I stitched at. But I'm going to go ahead and clip the curves on these. <laughs> flip them inside out and usually when you buy a bag of polyfill sometimes inside they'll give you a little wooden dowel you could use a chopstick you can use anything else that you have just a long skin thinny stick and you're just gonna flip these inside out and this chopstick helps you not only flip things inside out but poke things out to make the seams even and to help stuff polyfill in to where it needs to be so and we're gonna do that for all of these we're gonna poke them out I want to use our dowel and we're going to press against the seam like this and that allows the seam that's kind of tucked inside to push out just like that and we're going to set that down and we're going to do that for all the rest of them. <laughs> actually going to use our fiber fill here. We're going to, I already have a small hole open so I'd use it in another project. And we're going to take it small tufts at a time and we're just going to stuff it in to our legs and our arms. <laughs> about half an inch or so from the top because this is the part that's going to go inside the body and be sewn and then that's going to be your leg right here. So I'm going to do it for the rest of it and then we'll move on to our next step. Okay, we're done with that so we're going to take our legs and I have them pinned here at the top so that none of the stuffing will fall out. So I'm going to take our legs I will put them over here and set them aside. And there are our arms. I'm going to take my arms and I'm going to set them aside over here with our legs. So next, we have our ears and our bodies. But before we go any further with our ears and our bodies, this is the time to decide what you're going to do for your face, facial expressions, if you're going to clothe them, you know, however you want to do, whatever it is you want to do. So usually, when you have your face, you can do hand embroidery. You can hand embroider our face on there. You can use a piece of fabric and kind of do a belly, which is what I think I'm going to do. You can also use a piece of fabric and do something here on the inside for the uh, ears. So now that we're working on the body, I'm just going to go ahead and quickly sketch a face into the um, onto the body. I have my face sketched in here. I gave him a nose. I have two pairs of eyes, so I'm going to do button eyes. And I was thinking about doing something for his belly. But I don't know. 
little piece of fabric or something which I think would be super cute so I think I'm going to do oh this one I like this one this one's going to be his belly so I'm just going to take a piece of fabric here let's move all these bits out of the way we'll come back to them as we need them and I am just going to get a general idea So I had lightly sketched, oh, let's see, can you see that? I had lightly sketched a face and his belly and the dots were his eyes, but eyes are going to be. And so I'm going to use this piece of fabric and I'm just going to cut out a piece. perfect but you know what this is going to be a unique little cat he doesn't have to be perfect I'll put that right there ooh I did that good right right and covered the pencil marks alright so I'm gonna pin that in place so now I'm gonna take a break I'm gonna sew my belly on and I'm going to, because I'm doing a puppy dog, I'm going to see what I can do about his ears, because I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'll put a piece of fabric right here in his ears, um, so that he'll have something in his ears. And then I'm going to find two buttons that I like, and to sew, and I'll probably do his face as well. So, when I come back, his, his front part of his body and his ears should be done, and then we'll start be able to put everything together. Okay, so I've taken my time and I've sewed on the buttons for the eyes. I have embroidered the nose onto him and given him his belly. Same for the kitty cat. This time around, I embroidered his nose on, gave him whiskers in his mouth, sewed on his belly and buttons for the eyes. For both of them, I did the same thing for the ears. I sewed on fabric for the ears, then I put the right sides together sewed them up on with a, it was less than a quarter of an inch seam allowance, flipped them inside out. I'm not going to stuff these. And now it's time to put everything together. So what I'm going to do is line up our ears and the ears have a curve here so that they'll match the curve here. I'm going to line them up. I'm going to pin them in place. I'm going to make sure that when my pin is in here, that the part is going to be poking out over the edge so that I can pull it out in and out um, easily as I get ready to finish putting my back, my kitty cat together. Okay, now that I have their ears in place, I'm also going to add their arms and legs. So he gets two arms, he gets two arms, a set of legs, and a set of legs. So this is where it gets a little tricky. So we're going to set the legs aside because we're not going to put them on just yet, but we are going to put the arms on. And the arms that would normally look like this are going to be flipped to the inside like this and then pinned in place like so because as we sew around the edge we want to make sure that we get 
the end of the arms into the seam allowance. Oh. Alright, did you guys see what I just did? I pinned my pin like that, but you don't want to pin your pins like that. You want to make sure they're poking out like this, because when you put your back on, that pin will be hidden and you won't be able to eat, reach it easily. You won't be able to reach it easily to be able to remove it as you sew. So your pins always need to be poking out, no matter how difficult it is, Oop. or how strange it is. Alright, so let's get this one done real quick. And I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want the pin, the arms. I don't have a particular place for them. Just kind of like in an arm area, I guess. They match up the other side. Okay, now we're going to put our backs on. So we're going to lay the back of our body right on top just like that. And then we're going to match up our edges and pin it all in place. I'm going to start here. If you need to finagle, finagle. If you need to move things around, it's all right. Okay, so there you go. So it might not, it may look a little crooked, a little lumpy, but that's all right. We're gonna go ahead and do our next one. Okay, so the reason why I did it like this is so it'll be easier to sew around the edges this way. And then when we get done, we'll slip the legs in and we'll sew halfway across, just across the legs. Because here in the middle is where we're going to stuff our bodies once we flip everything else out. And when we flip it all out, we'll hand stitch it in the middle. So, I'm going to go sew these real quick and I'll be right back. Ba 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 
Okay, so I've got the back sewed on. Back is sewed on, and whenever you see a curve, what do you do with the curve? Trim the curve. So now I've got a nice little frizzy there where I trim the curves. Okay, next we're going to add our legs. So what I'm going to do is just slide them in. I'm just going to do it this way because that way I can see his face on the inside when I slide it in. So I'm going to slide it in. Okay, so I'm gonna, I decided as I'm doing this, I was thinking about it. So what we're going to do for both of these, I'm going to stick the legs on the outer edges of the body. So I'm taking the leg here and I'm pushing it so that it meets up with this seam right here, seam to seam, and flattening everything out and lining it up with the edges so that when I sew across everything it'll all be straight. But you got to remember we're going to leave a gap here in the middle so we're not going to be able to sew the legs completely closed or completely across because we need a big enough gap here in the middle to allow me to pull not only the legs but the rest of the body through. So we'll probably sew like from the edge to hmm, maybe right there. Just enough to secure the legs so they won't fall off and enough room here in the middle to allow me to pull everything through. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Okay, so now that I've got both my bodies with the legs stuffed in and everything stuffed in, I'm just going to sew across here. Remember, we need to leave a hole here in the middle to be able to flip. So I'll sew just across enough, not completely across the leg, because then our holes won't be big enough, but enough to secure the legs and to flip everything out. So I'm going to go do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. We're ready to flip everything inside out. I have sewn just enough so that the legs are attached. They were not going to fall out or move or wiggle or anything, but we still have a hole here in the middle. Now, I want to point out real quick, even though I know you can't see it because I'm using white thread so that it matches the fabric. Whenever I sew, I do a back stitch here and I do a back stitch here. Because as we move and try to take everything and push it outside this hole, it's going to stretch the fabric. And if you don't do a back stitch here, then your stitches are going to come undone. So back stitch at the beginning and at the end of each stitch, especially across here at the bottom, then that way your stitches will be strong and they won't start fraying and coming apart. Because you need that extra strength here, especially in these two spots as we pull everything out. Alright, so here we go. Let's take out a leg first. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to stuff the bodies through our openings and we're going to then hand stitch the closings here. So let's go ahead and get that done. <laughs> Thank you. 
These are awesome little stuffies to make for any type of service project that you have just to make them feel better. I hope you enjoyed it all and we'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye. Hey, I'm glad you were able to stay with us to the end of the video. I did want to show you a couple of things that I don't think I talked about in the video that happened. So here on the kitty cat, when I was making my kitty cat, I had some close to the edge so that it would give off a little fray, but I sewed it too close to the edge and as it frayed, it pulled out of the stitching. So I had to go back and do some simple uh, embroidery thread cross stitching across the top. I kind of like it like this. I think it gives it a little more character, but that's just me. If something like this happens to you, you can stitch it across the top as well, or you can just fabric glue and just glue it back down. I, do, I did use button eyes and I hand embroidered the nose and the mouth and, and the whiskers on the kitty cat. And I also did the same. I used felt here on, not felt, this isn't felt, this is flannel. I used flannel here on the puppy dog on its belly and his nose and his ears. And I embroidered his nose and mouth on as well. Now some kids like the flannel because they like the softness. And they like rubbing it against, you know, I don't, you've seen the kids who rub stuff up underneath their nose. And they like that. And also another thing, when you are sewing the bottom of the, of the animal, make sure that you caught the edges of your legs in the fabric because as I was stitching up the kitty cat here I realized that I had a I didn't catch the corner of the leg here and it popped out and if that happens all you have to do is take a needle and thread and go back in and stitch it back up real quick and you're okay and so just make sure that that is cleaned up and stitched nice and tight right there so nothing happens and I also want to say as you go over each of the little ears and arms and legs, you want to back stitch here and here. So you go over it and then take a couple of stitches back and then go over it, take a couple of stitches back and go over it, take a couple of stitches back at the beginning and the end. Because as kids love on the baby dolls, they'll pull on their arms and this is what's going to go first, either the top or the bottom. The middle's not going to go as quickly as the top or the bottom of the ears and legs and the arms are going to go. So anyways, those are a few extra tips that I learned along the way that I already knew and forgot about. And so I hope you enjoyed the project. And as always, I would really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up, if you shared it with anybody, and always click the notification bell to, to be notified when I have new videos coming up. So I hope you guys have an awesome summer, and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Bum 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 bum